So we now have the CLS 63 on the ramp. First thing to do is remove all the piping. The plan is to drop it downwards. Let's see where we're at with the CLS 63 AMG as the engine is now completely missing. There you go. Crankshaft, converts, the lot of it. Look how hard it is to remove this cap. It's clearly the problem. I can feel thousands of bits everywhere. So here's the crankshaft. As you can see, this one suffered some damage. And uh, this one as well. For this AMG engine, they don't sell aftermarket bearings. Do you know what that means? It means I need to buy a brand new crankshaft. And guess how much Mercedes have quoted that for? What's going on guys? It's your boy Nams. Back today with another video. Hope you lot are good. So I now bring you part two of the Mercedes CLS 63 AMG video. What happened on part one? Just to remind you, we diagnosed the starter motor to be faulty. We replaced that. We then tried to turn the engine and obviously the starter motor started working after that. The engine wouldn't turn. We then done a manual check on the crankshaft and we confirmed that the engine is indeed seized up. So this brings you down to part two where we basically take the engine out of the vehicle, strip all the components down to bare. So that's the cylinder head, the block, all the pistons, the crankshaft, the seals, the gaskets, starter motor, alternator, all of that stuff stripped down absolutely to bare parts. I'll then show you what sort of damage there is internally. I'm sure all of you want to see the reason why this vehicle is not starting. So let's get into the workshop and let's get this process started. So we now have the CLS 63 on the ramp. First thing to do is remove all the piping, especially the ones that are going to get in the way. The plan is to drop it downwards. We're going to release all the subframe bolts on the chassis and then slowly bring it down. That's the first step to get this engine out and inspect for damages. Here we go. We've got fast progress over here. The exhaust setting is up at the moment as we speak. The mechanics decided to release the gearbox on the bottom and take the engine at the top. I guess we'll see once we strip out more parts, what's the best course of action to get this engine out. So it's now Monday evening. Let's see where we're at with the CLS 63 AMG. Looks like we've got some progress over here as the engine is now completely missing and it's been pulled out alongside the gearbox. Nothing in there. So yeah, let's go see where the engine is. Let's see what we've done with it so far. So it's now hoisted to the engine stand. Here's the front of the engine. Got the big turbos there. And the plan is to get this engine up and running and get this turbo spooling as soon as possible. So let's rotate this engine, remove the sump, and let's find out what's going on. So here's the engine spun around, upside down. Let's remove this sump. Moving sump cover one. Why they got two pieces, I don't know. Okay, I see the problem already. I see loads of metal cuttings in there, as you can see, plenty of them. Let's remove this full sump and uh, um, let's see what else we can find. Look at that. Here we go. Sump has now been removed. It's poisoned the oil pump. No cuttings down here, but loads in the corner. Let's remove this now and see underneath it where the crankshaft sits and then we'll have a better understanding of what's going on here. There you go. Crankshaft, converts, the lot of it. Now, we're going to remove the pump, remove these caps one by one and then remove the caps of the converts and then see what the bearings are saying. And of course, then we we'll remove the crankshaft out and then inspect that. And then we can see what parts we need, but not forgetting the top end as well. We have to inspect the cylinder heads. Since it's got cuttings all over, it goes around the engine. So we must check the top as well. Okay, so as you can see, bearings. these bearings have spun. This is on the conrod itself. We're yet to check all the other ones and also the main caps as well. So far, we have got this. That's normally caused by oil starvation, poor oil quality, oil pump failure. Here we've got one bearing. 
See how it was um, joined up with the top? That should have been the other side. So that's how you know the bearing spun. And as you can see, it got some damage on the crankshaft as well. Crankshaft, fuck. Yeah, it's completely finished. We're going to obviously strip it down and send it to the machine shop to check properly. More than likely, we're going to need a new crankshaft and of course bearings to go with that. We're now going to start taking the main caps off, then the conrods, have a better look. We removed one of them so far and it's still seized up, so there's definitely more damage down there. Coming back to this though, if you look at the oil condition, that don't look good at all. I've just felt it in my finger a little bit and I can feel thousands of bits everywhere. So, so far, it looks like this engine has failed because of a late oil change. That's what I'd say for now at least. But let's remove these bits off and let's have a proper look. So what we've just removed here is the main cap. It holds the crankshaft down. As you can see, once you remove that, you'll be able to see the state of that as well. So this is cap number one being removed. As you can see, that looks pretty clean. Obviously it's got oil on it, but in terms of damage, Compared to that one, see that? So this is the cause of the engine being seized. This one right here. Here we just removed another conrod cap. Looks absolutely clean. So far it does seem like this is the only one that's taken damage into it. So we suspect that the damage is under there. We'll know now. Why I think that is because I can see the damage here. It's light and it gets heavy. Now as you can see there's one more cap there, which is the main cap. Look how hard it is to remove this cap. It's clearly the problem. Sick now. There you go. Caps come off. And there's the damages. Let's spin this engine. And let's confirm what we're saying. Keep going. We're now going to strip all the components out. Move this around, by the way. Back to the top. We're now going to remove everything from the top side. To inspect the cylinder heads. Look how heavy this engine is. You've got three mans on this. <laughs> okay, now. Nice. Yeah. As you can see, most of the stripping has been done. What's left is now the cylinder heads. Then we will be able to see the camshafts and the lobes, see if there's any damages on there. Hopefully not. And then we'll obviously get round to ordering the parts. So here we have the AMG block completely stripped out. As you can see, the cylinder heads have been removed, the crankshaft's out, and the block doesn't look too bad. These are not actually markings, so it looks pretty smooth in there. Let me try to focus the camera, there you go. So um, I'll be sending this to the machine shop with the crankshaft, and then um, I'll see what they say about the status of it. I'll show you guys the pistons as well. So here's the crankshaft, as I showed you before. All the other journals were clean. As you can see, this one suffered some damage. And uh, this one as well. When I feel it in my finger, it feels like the bearings have gone onto the crankshaft as it spun the bearing. So this might still be repairable. Obviously, we'll confirm that once the machine shop has a look at it. Now, if you look at the conrod here, the conrod and the piston, this one seems fine. Now, if you look at this one here, see the bottom bit that's been burnt. There's a lot of heat that's been applied, so more than likely I'll have to scrap this one and get some new ones. So anyway, all of this is going to go to the machine shop now. They will check everything for us and report back. Once that's done, I'll be able to give you guys an update and then hopefully start assembling things together, which is the interesting part. And finally, starting this engine up. Wish me luck. I'll see you guys in the next one. So finally, I'm back today with an update on this block. Let's have a look. So this so far has been to two machine shops, right? So the reason why I sent it there in the first place was basically this. Now, if you have a look at the crankshaft, by now, you guys should know that this goes right through the block and spins, right? You need lubrication between the journals from the oil, of course. Now this one had a problem on this one right there. See that? So just focus the camera. So that's got damage on it. And this one also. This is the main bearing, which comes right here. As you can see, it's quite rough. So I can't just put on brand new bearings and, you know, put it in and hope that it all works. It just doesn't work that way with a bearing. So I need to take it to the machine shop and get a line hole on it to smoothen this surface out before I put bearings into it and rebuild it back up. And as far as the crankshaft goes, normally what you do is 
you grind the journals down and change the bearings for oversized bearings so for example if i ground this down by 25 i'll need to compensate by getting bigger bearings which would be 25 bigger as well otherwise obviously it wouldn't make sense would it unfortunately for this amg engine they don't sell aftermarket bearings so do you know what that means it means i need to buy a brand new crankshaft and guess how much mercedes have quoted that for go on give me a guess i'll tell you 3600 plus that just for this just for this don't even ask me how much they want for this why not i use one because you don't have many on the market like the way i did the range rover engine there's loads of these available on the market for the range rovers and you know mercedes c-classes and whatnot but this ain't loads of mercedes c-class this is an amg 5.5 liter engine can't mess around with this one get a brand new one get some bearings from mercedes and put it back in two machine shops have said we can't do nothing about this block get a new one i have got another machine shop that have said they will do a line hole on it so i'll be sending this off there next and once it's back from there we can obviously start the rebuild process if all is good so yeah guys unfortunately that's as much as an update i can give you for this car today you see when it comes to engine rebuilds it's always the parts that let you down when i say that it's always the parts that slow the process down if i had the parts ready there and then in the ideal world you could just replace everything straight away but unfortunately it doesn't work that way you got to always strip down engines assess the damage look for the parts and start rebuilding from there i guess that brings part two to an end i'll have to update you guys once the block is back from the machine shop hopefully i'll be able to bring the block back bring all the parts together build the engine back up and put it all in one video i hope so obviously time will tell i don't want to create a massive gap of two months before i show you an update on the cls so let's just see how things go for now i'll be signing out follow me on my instagram nams underscore boost subscribe to my channel if you're new like this video leave me a comment and i'll see you guys next time